hip hop in Nigeria is quite big now. A lot of money, a lot of game players right now. But let's go way back in time and let's let's look at let's assess this thing. Who are the legends of the Nigerian rap game? Do we have legends first yeah, of all? There are only five legends of hip hop in Nigeria. Just five? I thought of like ten. No, mm -hmm. just five. Five people who have, you know, who stand out, who have done remarkably well, who have changed the face or changed the direction of hip hop at one point in time. Alright, I'm gonna base this list on originality, lyricism, impact, yeah. and body of work. Okay, fair enough. All right, number one on my list, and this is in this is totally random. There are five, and you know I'm not ranking them based on anything. Yeah. Um, number one is Mood Nine. Mood Nine is expected to be on this list. Mood Nine is the god of hip hop in in Nigeria, and if I dare say in Africa, nobody has taken hip hop to another level or done hip hop in the way Mood Nine has done it. Nobody has been able to succeed Mood Nine when it comes to lyricism. You know that sheer genius quality. Only Mood Nine. Mood Nine is the only hip-hop artist in Africa that possesses it, okay? This guy has six albums and five mixtapes. Fantastic wow. body of work. Wow. He's a hard-working artist. Even at a point in his career where he, many might say he's not relevant, but nice to make sure he still drops albums, okay? Make that make that six mixtapes, because he recently dropped an album yeah. and dropped another album simultaneously with 20 tracks, you know? Um, he recently released 30 songs in 30 days. This is this is body of work. You know, Mood Nine has the still has the dopest lyrics when it comes to punchlines, metaphors, wordplay. Mood Nine is number one, and he's been able to open, you know, a, a, a use the medium, this medium of hip hop to pass a message and able to build an army of people to say, hey, hip hop can actually be relevant in Nigeria. So Mood Nine for me is a legend by all standards. Okay. You know, nobody has been able to outshine Mood Nine on the track. Even though even Terry Terry Rapman came this close, but been nobody yeah. nobody has still been able to outshine him on the track. His brand, his essence still remains relevant throughout the years of hip hop. Okay. So who's number two? Number two for me is Idris Abdul Karim. Yeah, that's a controversial. People might say draft. it's controversial, but see, Idris is a legend by all standards. Okay. Idris social impact, you know, originality, right? Body of work. As of 2010, Idris had dropped six albums. Idris dropped two albums. Idris was so hot, he dropped two albums in a year. That reminds me of DMX, Yeah. right? When it comes to impact, who, what topic has Idris not rapped about? Right. From Jaga Jaga to Show Wale to Mr. Lecturer. To Mr. Lecturer, you know, social topics, topics that we need to discuss that people need to discuss in, in the society. This guy has talked on everything. Remember, Idris is still the only musician in Nigeria that has gotten feedback from the president. From the president. When yeah. Idris dropped Jaga Jaga, yeah. right? Obasanjo reacted yeah. to it. Yeah, that's yeah. big, I that's huge. That. Idris is the first musician to ever carry an Olympic yeah. torch. You understand? This is the relevance he, he, he got as an artist. So some people might say he's whack, he was he was dropping squeaky. Yeah, so we say he has but, but go back lines. and listen to those albums, right? Idris lyrics. He was always passing the message. So you might hear Figidi here and all that, but if you listen deep, deep, deeply, he's always he was always dropping messages. Even when he was with the remedies. Remember he introduced the pop culture kind of music along with the LDs. I'll get to that. But he was Idris. So from songs like Shakomo. This were moved from, from people who were doing reggae in the 90s and moved to pop trendy songs. It was people like Idris. Idris had some of the biggest diss songs, Wakawiki MCs, right? Idris predicted the future of Pantechon Boys and said Two Face, if they, if they went their separate ways, Two Face would, would be the only relevant guy. 10 years, 10 years or 12 years from that time, he was right. So Idris for me, before all these rappers started jumping on Northern Swags like Neto C and Ice Prince, Idris was doing Sangarin Kano, wearing yeah, the turban and, and, and riding the horse in the north. Idris is the only hip hop artist in Nigeria that can perform in anywhere in the country and get applauses. So if he's in Calabar, he's doing Calabar Girl. If he's in the north, he's doing One Northern Jam. If he's in, um, in, the, in the southwest, he's doing Okwachel. He's big and he's been he's been relevant all through the years. Okay, Idris can still go for a show today and still knock the crowd. Right. That's why he's that relevant. Right. 
And that's why he's a legend. Okay, okay, okay. After I just who's, who's next on that list? Definitely Rugged Man. Okay, so Rugged Man might not be the hottest hip hop artist now, but Rugged Man is a true legend. Okay, once upon a time when the whole industry was a monopoly, one guy stood up and said, I'm going to crash this monopoly and I'm going to be the voice of every upcoming artist who wants to do hip hop in this country. And that was Rugged Man. Rugged Man went against Kenny's music, a cabal. Shout out to Kenny Ogunbe. And D1. And D1. And he broke it. And he opened doors for a lot of artists. Okay. So the likes of Mood 9 and the rest were there. Prominent, but were not as big and could not break into the market. They were not as vocal. As... They were not as vocal. These guys were not even getting their stuff played on radio. And Rugged Man released one of the biggest diss songs ever in this country. Uh -huh. Featuring Normal Loss. No, no. And went against Kenny's music and went against the industry. He also went against uh, Maintain. And went against Maintain, who were some of the biggest pop artists at the time. time and broke it and you know and and opened a door for a lot of artists a lot of hip-hop artists to now make themselves relevant yeah. that's what rugged man did rugged man has three albums and four albums three solo albums and one group album you know ld the don you know they don't call him a don for nothing shout out to don jazz the first but don. ld was the first don or was the first artist to be called a don okay let's go back to 1999 when we we're only listening to to Raskimono and Evier now Goli and a lot of rigged music, right? LD hooked up with Tribesmen, KB and Freestyle, Freestyle and dropped some of the most pop trendy hip hop music at the time. Credible ones too. And very credible music too. That you know still relevant in clubs today. Songs like Shake Body, songs like Plenty Nonsense. These were songs that had a lot of message but were still chart friendly, so to say. Okay. LD put together that tribe. The successes of Two Short, Sasha and Dr. Seed is all tied to LD. He produced their music and shot their videos. Created them basically. And basically created them. You understand? This is LD. So you are listening to Ewa Bami Joe or Two Short, you know, hit songs. It was all LD is doing. LD is basically how many albums? LD has five albums, two group albums. That's legendary stuff. That's what legends, legends do. You know, and right now he's still relevant as being a businessman in the game. That's why he's a legend. Yes. That's what on. legends do. He moved on from music to other things. Okay, so LD said his last album, Undeniable, he said he wasn't doing music anymore and he moved on. And the last album was a great album, in my opinion. Fine. That's cool. So who's the last on the list? The fifth and the final person is Judah Baga, aka MI. The short black boy. Yes. Short black boy came from Joss and is credited for making hip hop sociable in Nigeria. Okay, so before MI came, the likes of Moon 9 and Rugged Man, you know, people, a lot of Nigerians will say, hey man, I, I, I don't I don't know what to say. He sounds dope, you know, the lyrics are tight and all get that, it. but you know, I don't get it. I can't relate to it. I can understand, you know, the lyrics, but I can't relate to it. It's, it, it doesn't sound like it's my abstract. struggle. Exactly. And MI came and just laid it down for the layman, you know, so the kid on the street and everybody could just understand and relate to hip hop. MI opened doors for the likes of Ice Prince, especially, the likes of Jesse Jags, the likes of Vector, you know, the likes of even Neto C. Basically, every rapper that came after him. Every rapper that came after MI, Scales, name all these rappers. MI was the one that opened the doors for them because he made rap sociable. And for that alone, he should be credited. Yeah. You know, you should also give him props for introducing the likes of Jesse Jags and Ice Prince. He could have done it all alone. We've seen some of the biggest Nigerian artists not being able to raise anybody up. True facts only but mi came and introduced ice prince and introduced jesse jazz yes. mi has three great albums and two fantastic mixtapes so that we can't forget about yeah neto is not on this list man come no, on no, neto c can't make the list neto fantastic. Has two good albums neto two has great two, albums two, two great albums but he isn't a legend why he hasn't done anything legendary that's it yes he's more than it's more than releasing it's more than, it's, it's, more than, it's more than releasing hits right people can release hits from today to tomorrow but what has been your impact in the hip-hop industry or in the music industry as a hip-hop artist you know so if you have a fantastic body of work it's fine your lyrics are fine but you know what is the social impact neto c has done who has neto c co-signed anybody ever so you need you need to have more than just a body of work to be a legend okay you need to change the face and direction of hip-hop 
and he hasn't he has added a lot of value but he hasn't up the game i think i game. think within that era emma is the one that takes it out instead of um, exactly exactly okay. okay so do you have like honorable mentions people that definitely you know, a lot of honor um a few on- honorable mentions mr raw formerly known as nigga raw yeah. introduced indigenous rap the Igbo rap yeah. right so when you talk about hip hop in Igbo Igbo, Igbo rap the before the likes rap. of Fino before the likes of Iblis jumped on the style Mr. Rowe introduced it alright remember his track with Clean the Drum Drunk. Obodo that was a classic the the, the follow up album Everything Remains Raw yeah. is, is, is close to being and today a today he's still relevant to the east yes and today he's still relevant in the east he's still on you know he's still performing at concerts yeah, and Star festivals Trek. So we need to give it to Mr. Rowe. That's an honorable mention. Okay. Who else? Definitely Lord of Ajasa. Okay. Lord of Ajasa introduced Yoruba rap before any before the Dagreens mm-hmm. or the Olamides mm-hmm. or the Vase mm-hmm. Ones or the re- or Reminiscences. It was Lord of Ajasa that took it upon himself okay. to say, you know what? I don't want to rap in English. I'm going to rap in Yoruba and remain relevant. Three good albums. Two, two out of three good albums, you know, a lot of relevance during that period, and basically introduced that green and the rest. For doing that alone, he gets an honor. It was also a vital part of the Coded Tunes setup. One of the biggest, you know, integral parts of, 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 of Coded Tunes. Yes. Okay. So after a lot of Ajasa Raw. I'll give it to two shots. Two shots for the fact that he has five albums, for the fact that he Still also. Working on the sixth album. Working on the sixth album, boss. The fact that he introduced Pigeon Rap. A high part of pigeon rap was introduced by yes. Two Shots. Okay, you you need to give Two Shots props for being one of the first people to engineer Alaba sales in Nigeria. He yes. wasn't the first, yes. but he was part of the first set. It was critical too. And he was it, it was critical. His debut album, Pirated Copy, right, became a, a turning point for how albums were yes. sold so we marketed, in, uh, marketed in Nigeria. And the album is one of the best albums ever to exist in, in, in Nigeria. So you yeah. need to give two shots an honorable mention for that. Okay. The last person I'll give Terry the rap man for being able to bring pigeon and English rap. That's the person I think he has done it the most. And he did it way back as 99, 2000. And it was in a very before, lyrical setup. You know, before it became popular. Okay, hip hop in Nigeria back then was spit English. And, you know, Terry the Rapman came and blended pigeon and English and made it so comical mm-hmm. and relevant. Yeah. You know, songs like Nabins, these are songs. His co sign, I think he's the rapper with the most co signs. Scales, Lil Cash, Olamide, mm-hmm. Kel. Kel. It Muna. was Terry the Rapman and Muna. Terry Rapman was the guy, the guy who introduced all these people and co signed them and said, these guys are going to be future of hip hop in Nigeria. And you know, to a large extent, they are. Okay. So looking into the next five years, who do you think are going to be the new legends of the game? The new legends of the game, say in the nearest future, number one person on, on that list for me is Jesse Jags. Jesse Jags is already being called the greatest. And if I do say so myself, he is the greatest in his time. Okay, so from relevant albums like Dynation Come to Royal Niger, Niger Company, Company, Jesse Jags has been able to prove that, you know, when it comes to lyricism and body of work and originality, he's a pro at it. Um, another person on that list for me is Ice Prince. Ice Prince right now currently is the most marketable hip hop artist in Africa. Yeah, but people tell you Ice Prince is kind of dodgy. So, so, so Ice Prince might not be the most lyrical artist right now, right? Mm-hmm. But social impact is there. Body of work constantly improving. Originality. He might be the new Idris. Ice Prince is not jocking anybody's style, but yeah. Ice Prince is going to be a legend because he's going to bridge the gap. All right, that gap from the foreign. Mm-hmm foreign from from the western world to nigeria yeah. he's going to bridge the gap this this homeboy has already met jay-z if he announces his deal with rock nation then it's over he's going to be the guy that opened that bridge that gap and opened okay. the doors okay what about Bado? man five, yeah, five i also five say albums. i also say you know olamide in the nearest future also is going to be a legend but you know he's he's one of the most hardworking. he is the most hardworking artist a uh, hip-hop artist That's in nigeria true. right now Five albums in five, five years. years, you know, a group album with uh, uh, Fino, fin- with Fino. and Fino. he's already releasing new singles. So Olamide definitely is going to make it for me. Lyricism is there, social impact is there, body of work is there, originality, he's not copying anybody. Okay. He's going to be a legend, Okay. you know, just a matter of time. What about Fino, man? Fino is killing it in the East. Fino is killing it in the East, but what has he done that Nigaro hasn't done? So I know he's elevated it, I know he's made it more commercial, sure. but let's trendy. give Fino time. Let's give Fino time and we can say, okay, yes, he's going to be you know, a legend. But no, okay. No. All right. So those are your five legends. The five yeah. legends of hip hop in Nigeria. 
Mode 9, Idris, Ruggedman, LD, MI, Facts Only. Hey, thanks for watching. Check out more Facts Only. And don't forget to leave your comments behind.